The Outdoor Journal. Brought to you by Shimano. Geared for performance. This is Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, the birthplace of arguably the most historically significant culture known to mankind, the Mayan civilization. Dating back to 1000 BC, the Mayans built huge cities of stone complete with pyramids and temples. The Spanish conquest of the mid-1500s all but destroyed this fascinating culture. Today, Mexico is rediscovering this ancient civilization, unearthing literally hundreds of Mayan cities. Ironically, history is being helped by geology. You see, the Yucatan Peninsula sits on top of a complex network of underground waterways that form natural wells that the Mayans called cenotes. It's believed that these hold the key to the mysteries of the Mayan Empire. Today, I'm going to dive into the underground world of historical treasures and take part in an archaeological expedition as I join Memo de Anda, diving expert and student of Mayan history. Must have taken years oh, yes. to build something like this. Moving all these big rocks and stuff. I mean, how do you do it? Yeah. It's just amazing how, how yeah. they've got how perfectly they, cut. How they perfectly work, how cut. they cut those yeah. rocks. Yeah. Do all of the rocks come from the same area, or did they bring rocks in? Yeah, they brought uh, materials from very remote places. Now, what would this have been? Not just an archway into another room. Wow. You can still see remains of painting. Right on there. Mm -hmm. This is the, the arch, the main yeah. arch. Right on. Isn't this beautiful? Oh. Was the Mayan culture an oral culture? They have a written word. They had written word that unfortunately most of it was destroyed. Now there's a lot of written things on the stones. The glyphs, they are an important part they still tell of the story. story. They're telling the story. Wow. Well, there's a whole other branch over there. Yes. Now, could you imagine the, the greatness of this city when it was 10,000 people running moving here. around and uh, living here marketplaces with, uh, let's try to place your mind on that time and see the activity and hey, if only you could go back in time as we head to the jungle and the heart of the peninsula in search of the cenote where we'll be making our dive memo explains that arrangements have been made for us to stay in a very unique place it's called the hacienda tomazon it's also part of a great restoration program that is further helping Mexico rediscover its past. This 16th century hacienda was once a thriving enterprise farming a plant called Hennigan, which was used for the making of rope. Today, as many as six of these magnificent old estates have been brought back to life with another four in various stages of completion. They're being transformed into gloriously lavish resorts, complete with all the amenities you'd expect from a five-star downtown hotel Minus the downtown, of course. In its place, the Yucatan jungle, complete with a real-life Mayan village. These grand early Spanish factories have been the center of the Mayan commerce and way of life in these parts for over 500 years. And today, as it was back then, they're the only source of employment here deep in the jungle. So this is what it was all about right here. Yes. This is what gave oh, yes. birth to this tremendous so this, industry. It used to call the Anakin the green gold. The Mayans have always used the Henneken fibers as a means of holding together objects. But it wasn't until after the Spanish conquest that it played such a big role in their survival. 
early European technology and know-how allowed for literally millions upon millions of tons of henequen to be processed and exported all over the world, as the Yucatan became known as one of the very best sources of good quality, inexpensive rope. But unfortunately, modern technology also played a role in its demise, as the advent of nylon in the mid-1900s put a quick and painful stop to the once burgeoning industry. Today, the Spanish architecture and color of the period serve as a reminder to the guests of their glory years. How long did it last exactly? Between 1880 yeah. and 1920. That's, this That's it. End of the last century, beginning of this one. Yeah, in those days, it wasn't yeah. a big money maker. Some of the haciendas had 600, 700 people working on them. Oh, yeah. Easily. The dives that we're doing, these are definitely Mayan ruins, yes, though. There's are, no mistaking about it? No mistake. Yeah, we are in the heart of the Mayan uh, zone. Okay. Actually, we're heading right now to the Puk uh, area, and this is where we're going to have our dive today. Okay. And actually, this dive is going to be made uh, in the middle of uh, Mayan site. We have the chances to uh, see, would you know, this place uh, have uh, never been dived before, and we're gonna try it today to see if we're lucky and we could find, find something. something. Even though if we don't uh, find any artifacts or remains of Mayan occupation, the dive it's, it's itself is it. beautiful. Yeah. It's worth it, yes. Yeah. So this is the city hall? See, this is the, the city hall. This is where the mayor is. We call it Presidente Municipal. Now, He's a maximum authority here. Now, does everybody have to get permission if they're going? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is a special place. Yeah. Hello. This is Presidente Municipal, Angel. Sir Angelo Angel. Viola. Appreciate it. Pedro. Pedro. Nice to meet you. Buen amigo. Well, thank you very much for letting us come and shoot. We're very excited about this. This is going to be a big show for us. Very excited. We appreciate our, we show our hometown to, to hold the war. What's really nice about the whole thing from, uh, from what I've also heard is that it's being very well preserved and looked after. And that's probably the key to the whole thing. They have already been doing a great job protecting. That That helped a lot yeah. because yeah. They, they have a real appreciation for their places. We have to show the, our the people of our hometown that way. That way they can learn and teach them how they have to take care of yeah. what, we, what we have. Gracias. gracias. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Unlike the pyramids of Egypt and other such sacred tombs, the cenotes of the Yucatan have for the most part been spared the looting and pillaging, partly because they're underwater and partly due to the Mayans keeping a watchful eye. Coming up, we enter the underworld. Welcome back to the Outdoor Journal. We're in the heart of the Yucatan jungle. Our destination is a small hole in the ground called a cenote, which so far has eluded our cameras. I'm starting to wonder if it even exists. What the hell's that? I don't see a cave. Let's have a look. I'm not really sure what we're doing here. What do you got here, boys? Oh, I see they've got it covered up. Is this, the, is this it? Yeah, this is it. <laughs> no way. <laughs> it's not a cave. you got to be kidding me. I mean, that's literally under the roots of the tree. Yeah. Or Winnie Pooh Farm. Or... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's I guess so. <laughs> now, why do they, why they keep it covered up? Why yeah, is it covered probably up? They, they want to uh, just to uh, avoid people to, to, go to look at it. Yeah. Wow. Holy cow. And there's water down there. Yeah, it's water. The water is it's about 50 feet below. Wow. And we're going to go in there? <laughs> we're going to go in there. <laughs> That's the part. Okay. All right. All right. Mm, oh, yeah. Hey, how you feeling? I'm feeling great. You feeling okay? Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> well, it must, be, it must be me then that's a little nervous. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, well. Yucatan, todas las cuevas tienen un guardián. A guardian. Has a guardian. Okay. Un dueño. It's okay. a garden spirit. It's it, a serpiente. A snake. 
Okay. This is necessary that you tell me this now? Yeah, before, I know. Before, <laughs> before I go in, oh, this is very good, good timing that you have a sacred serpent that's guarding the, the hole. Okay, that's good. Well, that's all right. Because my buddy here is going first anyways. <laughs> and they love Canadian food. Oh, do they? Oh, that'll be even In more Italian interesting. Too. That'll be even more interesting. Well, this is um, now, this would not be a normal dive that just anybody would go yeah, on. This no, is no. more of an archaeological That's uh, right. exploration. Yeah, this is uh, more uh, exploration. But now. I understand you've got a lot of sites that uh, are a little, little easier access than this one that you can take people down. Sure. If somebody just wants experience going down there below. There is beautiful places, very easy access. You can go walk into the edge of the water, have beautiful crystal water, very easy dives. Yeah, yeah but this is not for a regular tourist yeah. uh, kind of guy. Yeah, I, I, I'm wondering whether it's even for me, to be quite <laughs> honest with you. I'm, I'm a regular tourist kind of guy. <laughs> Okay, well, let's get to work, gentlemen. I didn't, I didn't bring all of you out here just to, you know, crack jokes and all. There's work to be done. <laughs> just what I need out here in the jungle. A modern-day Mayan comedy troupe. Of course, the ancient Mayans didn't have the benefit of modern technology to go into the underworld, like scuba gear and aluminum pulleys and nylon rope. All they had were the fibers from the Hennequin plant, and an awful lot of courage, especially when you consider that their world was, and for the most part still is, filled with superstitions and strange beliefs. It's hard to believe, it's hard to, to believe how, how uh, the ancient Mayans actually uh, worship these places. So they, they come here and do offerings to their gods, because they believe their gods live in here. The, this is the entrance to the infra-world. Okay. okay? So this, the, the infra-world is the place where they go when they die. So okay. This is what they what they believe. Sometimes we believe it was burial sites or sacrificial sites. They they had uh, different functions. Okay. Actually, right now in the present time, the Mayans still believe that these places are guarded by uh, different uh, spirits. Just standing here. It's it's magic. Yeah, you can uh, you can really yeah, feel it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know there is. There's that could people... just be fear though on my part. Okay. <laughs> All honesty. If, if we enter here with respect. Let me tell you, I'm serious about that. I always do, and I will talk to them and say we're, yep. we will, we are not going to uh, destroy anything. We're yep. not. Our intentions are good here, so they will protect us. They Let's will put it allow this us to go in. It can't do any harm. To to to, to offer so sure, it, it cannot sure. do any harm. So harm I, I'm yeah. with you on that. I think I'm as ready as I'm going to be, buddy. Okay, uh, and I'll let you lead. Because you know, I'm right. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not kind of guy. I'm not kind of guy. <laughs> I'll let you lead. Good. There's something weird and unnatural about putting on scuba gear in the middle of the jungle and then jumping into a hole in the ground. But that's exactly what I'm about to do. How do I get myself into these situations? Now I guess I, uh, those bats that I saw flying around earlier on, I guess they'll be they'll be fine. No problem. They, they won't bother you. You can talk to me all the way down too. I'll feel a whole lot better hearing your voice. <laughs> all right. Coming up, a trip to the underworld. Welcome back to the Outdoor Journal. Well, this is it. We're about to enter a cenote deep in the jungle of the Yucatan Peninsula. I'm doing fine here. Okay. This is the narrow passage. So you're still walking on some roots? You still got roots there? Yeah, there's a lot of roots and, and rocks here. This okay. is very narrow. You have to be careful here. Okay, once you pass this, this point, everything's fine. Now I'm here. Holy cow. How's it looking? Good, beautiful. Okay, can we pull the rope? Yeah, sure. Rope coming up. Free. Okay. Yep. That means he wants me. Okay. All right, I'm coming, buddy. Okay. 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 Easy, easy. That's that's a hard point. Once you pass that one, that's it.
Okay, you're almost there. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay, just easy there. Easy. Easy. Use your rope. They can stop you if you need to. Okay. Okay. Get all that. If you can try wow, to go a little. This is wild. <laughs> Okay, okay so try to go a little to the left, you can stand up, just uh, like I'm doing. Okay, down a little bit. Okay, try to move a little bit to your left, because I cannot move too much. Okay. Good, you can stand up there. See? Yes. All right. Okay. <laughs> Not much room though, but we can stand up and Good. stay here for a second. Wow. Holy cow, look at the bats behind me. Would the Mayans have ever come down here, you think? Oh, yes. They actually get in some of those uh, rocks and uh, perform some of the, of the offerings. That, that could... So they weren't afraid to come actually down in the water? Uh, no, sometimes I, I believe they, they actually get in the water, but they do it with a lot of respect. There is an aura down here. There is a feeling that... Uh, I, I can't put words to it. Wow. To say I'm dizzy from the rush of being down here in a place with such historical and spiritual significance hardly seems worthwhile at this point. Some things are just better left unsaid, and this is definitely one of them. Now, the last piece of equipment, and we're just about ready to maybe write a whole new chapter in Mayan history. As we drop into the bottom of the cenote, I can't help but think that maybe we're the only people who have ever immersed ourselves in these sacred waters. Although it's believed that the Mayans lowered themselves down to the water's edge, there's been little, if any, evidence of them actually penetrating the surface. Hopefully we can confirm or disprove that theory today. The hundreds of fragments of animal bones scattered all over the cave floor tells us that cattle, goats, and other mammals were offered up as sacrifices. But still no evidence of human remains, which some of the legends allude to. There are even stories of human-like shapes that have been seen drifting here in the shadowy depths. One thing's for sure, the Mayans are not short of legends and folklore. The Mexican government has imposed very strict rules about the removal of any of these artifacts. Under no circumstances are they allowed to be removed. This place is a virtual gold mine of both natural and man-made treasures. Wow, this is one of the best examples of a Pizarra black dish I've ever seen. The first explorers to the Yucatan were amazed to find an extraordinary culture so focused around water. But when you consider it's a place with no rivers and lakes and an incredible dry season, it's not hard to see why most of the pre-Hispanic Mayans saw the water god as the most important idol in their daily worship. The Mayans saw these naturally formed wonders as a gift from above and therefore it's believed they quite often made these places sacrificial sites. This perfectly preserved pot could have at one time contained special oils or spices that were meant to please the water gods. This rock is definitely not a natural formation. That's a man-made hole, possibly even an early wheel. But what's it doing way down here? Another great example of pre-classic period Mayan pottery. Outstanding. More animal bones. This one looks like maybe a cow or even a horse. To date, at least 440 cenotes have been located throughout the jungle, with another 4,000 believed to be in existence. What's that? Ah, uh, just some kind of animal leg bone. Way too big to be human. Mm -hmm. 
Due to the existence of these historical and natural attractions called cenotes, cave diving as an ecotourism activity is really catching on here. The Yucatan is one of only three places on Earth where it is possible, the others being Florida and Cuba, to journey to the depths of the Earth. What an incredible experience. When I first heard about this opportunity, I was kind of wondering why in the world was there so much mystery around the Cenotos? I mean, I thought, well, if the Mayans are still alive, why couldn't they just get the story of what the Cenotos represented to the, to the Mayans? But now I'm starting to understand. It's still very much folklore and legend. Nobody knows for sure what they represented. Yeah, and now because, I know why. Because we can see the artifacts, but uh, we cannot get to the field of the beliefs of the ancient people. This is the hard part of it. What uh, was in the mind of the people performing the rituals, this is the yeah. important yeah. point about it. And that's it. where archaeology comes in, by yeah. mapping out what's down there. Woo! Nice job, boys. Nice job. Nice job. <laughs> that night we stopped by the roadside to enjoy a few Mexican cervezas and allow the adventure of the day to finally sink in. Before long we were joined by some local Mayans on their way home from working the fields and before you knew it the stories and legends started to flow. When it was all said and done Memo and I had agreed to venture into another cenote that these old fellows seemed absolutely certain contained human remains. Join us next week as part two of this incredible story will take us on an unprecedented archaeological discovery.